army with roads soldiers from Okuoma community. I am Bola of Anthis is plus politics. Soldiers of the Nigerian army who have been laying siege reportedly on the Okuoma community in Ogele, South Local Government Area of Delta State since March 14, 2024, following the killings of 17 army officers and soldiers on a peace mission, have been pulled out from the community. Local sources from Akubene and Okoloba communities in Bomadi local government area told newsmen on Wednesday that, quote, the military troops were sighted suddenly pulling out of Okoma community on Tuesday, May 7, 2020, 2024, unquote. Delta State Governor Sharif Oburwari, while confirming the troops withdrawal from Okoma community, lauded President Bola Tinubu and the military high command for their interventions. Borovori, at a media briefing, said that with the withdrawal of the troops, the people of Okoma could now safely return to their homes and begin the process of reintegration and rebuilding their homes and community. The governor said, quote, My dear good people of Delta, I have the pleasure to announce to you that upon much deliberations and collaborations between the government and the military leadership, the Nigerian army has agreed to withdraw its officers and men from Okoma. I spoke with the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Taurid Lagbaja, on Monday 6th of May, and as of today, 8th of May 2024, the military has withdrawn from Okoma. With this development, the people of Okoma can now safely return to their homes and begin the process of reintegration and rebuilding their homes. Joining us to discuss this development is the Executive Assistant on Communications to Delta State Governor, Dr. Barrister Fred Latimo Ogene Xibe, we also have the Senior Special Assistant to the Governor of Media, Mr. Nelson Eguare, and the Uruba of the Wu Kingdom, Chief Abizo Henry. Gentlemen, welcome to Plus Politics. Uh, Doctor, uh, how would you want to start? What update do you have for the Nigerian public, both at home and in the diaspora, because we have been globally, we're going global as we speak, uh, on developments in that specific area subsequent to the governor's, uh, governor's encouraging and uplifting uh, announcement read out earlier. Well, we are very happy uh, that uh, the Okoma issue has been um, finally resolved. Because when the military uh, uh, board of inquiry came, the governor promised to give them the um, position paper of government on that issue. Because uh, February this year, that issue was resolved, and Okwama and Okolaba communities, they signed a peace agreement. And the details of that peace agreement is ably contained in that um, uh, position paper that His Excellency to give to the to the military board of inquiry that came to Delta, uh, and of course you know that uh, that issue was a very serious matter, and we must thank His Excellency the Governor for his maturity and the the pragmatic ways that he has handled that Obama issue. Uh, we owe him a lot for that because. Uh, it's a matter that would have almost consumed not only Okwama community, but some other parts of the state. But for the governor's thoughtfulness and his, uh, uh, you know, um, 
proactively Jaisip Star. He was able to relate it perfectly with the military and the presidency to have this issue resolved. But right did now, that, the, object have, you... the, object, the object we have right now is that uh, the committee set up by the governor, you know, to work out uh, the how the community can be reintegrated, headed by um, Mr. Abraham Obodo. They are working seriously. And uh, when that committee paper is submitted to His Excellency, uh, it's also going to help, you know, to the people of Okwama to return back home safely. And then uh, hello, Barista. <laughs> yes. Barista, was it, a was it a Freudian sleep, uh, as in sleep of the tongue, for you to have used the word resolved? Because at some point, about twice, you used the word resolved. I'm wondering resolved in the backdrop of the fact that as we speak, upon all the uh, upon all the stay of the military in that area, all the suspects as declared wanted have not been found. And as we speak, a uh, resolution would still take a while because many of the innocent uh, members of the communities who had to run for safety and who had to run for protection from the lightly vindictive strike of the military would have to find a way of resettling, rehabilitating themselves, reintegrating. And so when, when I heard you innocently use the word resolve, I was a bit, um, I wouldn't want to respond to that. Yes, I think resolve is, uh, is appropriate in this context. Because um, if, if there was no agreement with the military between the state government, you will have the military pulled out. The most important aspect of this matter is for the military to uh, pull out from Obama so that we can re you know, begin reconstruction of that community and the people start returning. Uh, that the military is no longer there is a very big achievement as far as we are concerned. And when we say resolve, we mean if we did agree, uh, if we didn't uh, agree with the military to some extent, I'm sure they will still be at Okoma as we speak. So leaving that community uh, is, is a pointer to the fact that uh, all of that issues will be uh, taken care of uh, either now or in the near future. Uh, uh, maybe, uh, uh, just maybe it's me who is getting a bit pedantic. Uh, because uh, I, I'm still somewhat uncomfortable with the world resolve. I can't take it away from you, and you have uh, contextualized it, but I'm thinking that uh, uh, maybe it's about time we, we developed the courage to speak to some aberrations that have been, that has been transported into normalcy in that area. One wonders, you know, one is just wondering aloud now, why would the members of the armed services be in that area in the first place when ordinarily it was supposedly a, a disagreement between two families? Uh, you know, the killings of the, of the um, soldiers and officers was disturbing enough then one wonders what kind of uh, acculturation and uh, what kind of acculturation some youths or some elements of that society uh, must have gotten to the extent that they did not only mount such a powerful force to, to uh, kill, murder those people, but they indeed desecrated their cadavers. Uh, the cadavers were reportedly, uh, and I'm sitting there, and and I'm thinking, maybe just may, we may be just glossing over, glossing over issues that we need to be a bit more forensic and a bit more scientific in the way we. But fortunately, we have another guest now. Welcome to Plus Politics, and uh, how would you want to start? Let me let the barista breathe. Ah. Well, well uh, please let me just quickly respond to this last leg of your of your uh, comment. Uh, you will recall that uh, the military set up a committee, and the 
paper, the, the position of the military has not been made public. Uh, I think uh, one of the uh, terms of reserve could be where were the military there in the first place. So we have not got it done yet. What, where we are at the moment is, okay, military has pulled out. How do we get to Koma community back to normal? How did the people return back to their villages and start their normal life and commercial activities so that that community can bounce back to life? I think that is where we are right now. The issue of whether or not there was an aberration somewhere by the military or by somebody, that is a matter for the, uh, uh, you know, the report uh, to indicate. And by the time the report indicates that, they to be handled properly. Okay. Uh, at this juncture, I think it's about time we we fully welcomed uh, Mr. Nelson Aguare, the assistant, special assistant to the governor on media, also on the show. Uh, I would want to start, sir. Honorable. Okay, for me, um, it's, it's a great relief that the army has uh, uh, pulled out from Okwama so that the citizens can uh, come back to their, their community and uh, live their life again. Uh, it, it's a great, it was a great news to us uh, when um, the governor briefed the press that uh, the army has eventually left uh, Okwama uh, and he, uh, he appealed to the people of Okwama to come back to their community, even though he had earlier um, established uh, an IDP camp for the people of Okwama so that they can, um, uh, in any case, all their houses have been uh, destroyed uh, by the military uh, as a result of uh, the killing of uh, the 17 soldiers and officers of the army in that community. So, uh, but what we are hearing now is that uh, there's a renewed onslaught in that community uh, because uh, we got some reports yesterday that um, uh, we are you one, there? one or two persons uh, was killed. Uh, but it's unfortunate. It's, it's unfortunate that uh, we had that report, and I pray that uh, uh, it's not what we are thinking because we want peace in that enclave. Uh, honorable, honorable Aguare, uh, I, I, um. Like I said earlier on, when I was engaging a doctor barista, I said maybe I was the one that was getting a bit pedantic. But I, I'm a bit comfortable with the word relief that, you know, uh, relief that you have used. Uh, relief any, any human being uh, would empathize with the, with the innocent members of... Uh, the community is affected in view of the fact that, and this is no judgment against the army or the, the military, but in view of the fact that some form of collective punishment uh, was, uh, was meted out uh, as a, uh, in reprisal to the very disturbing, very uh, horrendous uh, killing and mothers of their of their personnel uh, so uh, i am also very happy as a fellow compatriot to know that uh, some innocent nigerians but how well how well if i may go you know if i may go back to to barrister now how well is the delta state government uh, trying to work with those who may be innocent with a view to letting the authorities uh, exfiltrate the characters who are causing them problems. Because obviously some characters in that area are given to violence and they perpetrated, they perpetrated that horrendous occurrence. How uh, well uh, the innocent ones engaging either through after all we are the traditional ruler who had to voluntarily go submit himself and i guess when they held him for some days and discovered that he was innocent they ultimately released him uh, barrister you want to update us on that uh, the, the issue of uh, the issue is raised is very important but that is the domain of the security agencies uh, in terms of uh, looking for the corporates, um, you know, you can discuss all security issues on television. 
uh, strategic uh, military operations that they did before and what the uh, police and other security agencies are doing right now is a little bit um, confidential. And so, um, but what I can tell you is that they are working seriously and uh, I'm very, very sure that uh, uh, in, due, in due time, uh, they, will be, they will be brought to justice. Uh, Nelson, <coughs> it was for some of us who are puritanical Democrats and uh, constitutionalists, it was somewhat disturbing that uh, at the heat of the situation, uh, the governor was like uh, denied entry into that neighborhood. Uh, how did those of you who work with him and serve him, how did you people take it? I know, you know, he, 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 he had to bring good judgment into it and soften the tension and ultimately, I guess the military had gotten to a point to where the position that the governor seemed to have taken has been vindicated now. But having said that, uh, for anybody who believes that a man who has earned the mandate of his people should, shouldn't have been refused, and especially who is defined to be the chief security officer of that subnational in the constitution, uh, denying, him, uh, denying him entrance into that area was a bit disturbing for, for some. How did the people take it? Well, um, thank you very much for that question. I, I would like to say that, uh, uh, yes, the governor is the chief secretary officer of the state, but be that as it may, Okwama was a scene of crime, a scene where 17 officers and soldiers of the Nigerian army were murdered in, in an unjustified manner. But be that as it may, the governor took some deft political moves to ensure that uh, whatever happened there uh, was managed in such a way that the people of Okwama, uh, as we speak now, they have been allowed access back to their ancestral home, even though their homes have been destroyed by the army. As a Are you way of reprisal. But let me, uh, uh, he has tried to, to do, Hello, can, I, 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 I can, I'm, I'm sure you can hear me clearly. Yes, we can hear The you. governor tried as much as possible to ensure that all the issues that emanated from Okwama were handled diplomatically. He first, he first went to, uh, he had a security briefing at Bomadi after the killing of the 17 officers and soldiers. And then he went again to the president to brief him as the commander in chief of the armed forces. And after that, he tried, he went, he attended the, 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 the burial of, of the, the officers at the Abuja Cemetery, the military cemetery. And thereafter, he decided the, the issue of uh, trying to see how they can release the king that was uh, arrested in, in, in view of uh, that attack. You know, if you can recall, the king was uh, declared wanted and he, he turned himself in. And after the investigations of the military, they found out that the man was innocent and they released him. And following his release, the governor again took some diplomatic moves. He visited the community and he saw the destruction there. And then, of course, he kept engaging with the military and even the commander in chief. And as we speak, uh, as I, I, I think that's about Wednesday that the, 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 the military gave him a green, a, a green light to, to, uh, to tell the community people to return back because they, they pulled out from the community. And he appreciated the, the commander in chief, Mr. President and commander in chief of the armed forces. And of course, the chief of army staff, the chief of defense staff, and all the top echelon of the army. He appreciated them for the cooperation that they gave to the state government so that the people can come back to their homes. And as we speak, the, 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 the committee that he set up to set up an, um, a, what we call an IDP camp, because there's no home there for the people to go back to. So he set up an IDP camp where the people can go, at least before they, they rebuild the community of Okwama. Uh, but unfortunately, what we are hearing, uh, following the withdrawal of, of, the, of, the, of the army, that there was some attacks, uh, people trying to loot the community, and then the community people returning back to the community attacked them, and there were some killings and all of that. Personally, I'm not happy about that, that development. And... Uh, I will urge so the authorities you, you, you to investigate are, that. You, you are telling the viewers uh, that 
so, uh, uh, reportedly that subsequent to the withdrawal of the soldiers, uh, some elements uh, have taken to violence and have are seemingly, seemingly uh, making life much more uncomfortable for even those who are brave enough to want to return. Is that what you say? Yes. There are some reports that um, following the withdrawal of the army from Okwama, that neighboring communities or some uh, 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 criminal elements invaded the community to steal from that community. You can imagine a community that was abandoned for, for some uh, almost two months now. And then the people trying to return, uh, some elements are trying to steal from that community. And that led to that attack, which uh, also led to the killing of uh, uh, some persons. And personally, I'm not happy about that development because the governor has tried to ensure that peace returns to that enclave. Barrister, uh, it, it, it's looking like uh, it's looking like violence has been culturalized in that part of of, of the world. It's like uh, uh, it's like some elements believe and have resorted resorted into uh, employing violence. At, at all cost uh, is that am i just exaggerating uh what is happening or it, does that speak to the facts on the ground given what the honorable special advisor uh, has just relayed to us oh well the issue that uh, my colleague uh, referred to um well there are several versions to it and uh, I learned also that the, the people who went there, uh, some of them were, you know, clashing based on uh, oil bunker issue and the rest of them. So the the, 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 the clear picture is not right now. We, we don't really know, uh, you know, what those uh, criminals uh, went there for or what brought them there. I think it's a matter for the security justice to, to investigate and then um, make it, you know, let us know, you know let the public know that... Uh, the people who went to Okwama recently, this is the reason why they were there. And I will say that, I, I will say that uh, whatever precautions that have been made recently, uh, I'm sure the regular security agency will be able to deal with that. And uh, since it has been announced, uh, we've not heard us at this evening that uh, they will continue uh, bombardment or fighting or conflict in that area. But the, the, what I would like to say is that uh, it's time for the tight security in the Okwama community and the environment so that as the governor is working very hard to rebuild that community and to make life easy for the people who are returning back home, then there is a sufficient uh, provision for uh, tight security to protect lives and property in the meantime until such a time where, you know, it will be visible that uh, the people can be on their own. Uh, doctor, uh Doctor, you used a phrase, and I can't just walk away from that phrase. And that phrase is uh, some people, uh, maybe because of oil bunkering or whatever, and, you know, given the fact that it was not quite a line that you, you spilled out directly, but inevitably... Uh, you used that phrase to build the case that you've just, uh, the, the uh, point that you've just made. One is sitting there feeling that we may just be, we may just be dealing with the cosmetics of the things that have gone wrong fundamentally there in that area and not be speaking on a program like this uh, to uh, some of the canker worms that are foiling this violence. How would you want to respond to that? Well, you, you know that today with the advent of the social media, we have these um, citizen, uh, you know, journalism or uh, reporters who are all over the place, especially when people live in a particular community will go snap pictures and uh, give their own version 
and then you hear another version from somewhere, and then there's different reports, conflicting reports. Uh, when you find yourself in that situation, what you normally would do is that uh, you, you wait for the final report. And that final report, most, especially, uh, most times, is, uh, is usually the security agencies who have that authority to say, okay, we have investigated. This is exactly what happened, uh, you know, after the military pulled out, and this is the reason why it happened. Okay? But the issue of bunkering that I referred to was part of this kind of, you know, news that was on, you know, on social media platforms and some platforms, uh, giving different versions to, to exactly what, to what happened after the military pulled out. So my take on this is that, um, well, you know, the, the military board uh, of inquiry set up by the defense headquarters uh, in collaboration with uh, security agencies in the state, uh, at the appropriate time, they will release the, their report, and that report will, will uh, itemize the issues uh, in Okwama and why there has always been intention in Okwama of recent. Honorable Agare, Honorable Agare, are you there? Yeah, one cannot. But, just, one one cannot but sympathize with your principal. Uh, he is the constitutionally recognized uh, head of security in that sub national. Uh, apart from that, he is also seen to be the iconic character that the good and like the yorubas will say the good and the good you know what i mean i don't want to say the negative that, yeah. that the good and the good mm -hmm. would be would be uh tied to and yet he is also in some respects like any other governor in nigeria is also in some respects uh quite empirically important in some respects. It does not control any, any institution of coercion or any agency of coercion. And, you know, it can only do what is done seemingly well. Let me see. Yeah. Seemingly well since this occurrence happened. But what is the way forward? At least you are closer to him. What is the way forward beyond? Because he's now also leading with a population of people whose lives have been disrupted, their property destroyed, uh, even people returning to Okwama now, it's not going to be business as usual. Many may not even have roofs over their, over the, you know, yes. their houses. Uh, some of the properties may have been so vandalized, that of vendetta by, you know, we're not saying the military alone and... So what's the way, what's the way forward that's been discussed in well, uh, the government? Thank, thank you very much, sir. The, the way forward is simply patience. Patience in the sense that the, the state government has set up an IDP um, a camp uh, for the people of Okwama to first uh, come in because we we heard that when they left their their community, they were living in the bushes, the forest, and of course that wasn't good enough. So what we need from them right now is patience so that um, the state government will uh, see how they can partner with the federal government and other uh, stakeholders to rebuild that community. We need patience to rebuild that community because a lot has gone wrong as far as that community is concerned. So we need an understanding from the people of Okwama. We want peace in that enclave, we want peace uh, with their neighbors, so that development can come back to that uh, neighborhood. That's exactly what we are preaching. The governor wants peace, and uh, he doesn't want all of these and, uh, um, uh, entanglements here and there, uh, things that will cause um, unrest in, uh, in that uh, neighborhood. He doesn't want it at all. So he wants peace for the people of Okwama, the people of Ukoloba, and the entire Bomadi and Ugelisad villages of the kingdom. As uh, as wonderful as that sounds, and as ideal as one would ordinarily have expected that uh, to be what the governor wants, uh, the reality on the ground is such that, uh, according to the update you gave us earlier, 
uh, peace is a bit uh, a bit stretched in in that neighborhood now. Uh, how well are the formal institutions? You know, and it's ironic. We have 29 agencies of state, ministries, departments, and agencies that ordinarily are security related from the three armed services to the police, to a civil defense, to the intelligence agencies, and yet we are having this within our borders. Our people are having their lives disrupted. Uh, the elected governor who has the mandate of the electorate of that subnational can only resort to what the Pope does better amongst nations, just be preaching to peace. It's very disturbing. I don't know. Uh, doctor, you want to respond to that? Uh, well, you, you see, this is uh, one of the issues that we have been uh, conversing. In, in the public space, and I'm sure you have been part of that debate too of uh, uh, public, uh, you know, uh, state policing. And uh, the, the most beautiful part of state police is that, you know, the governor will be in charge, you know, of, of the police chief, and he's able to now monitor and uh, give appropriate directives. And the directive of uh, the state police chief must be obeyed because, you know, it's a state police. But the way we have it today, we still have, you know, the federal government in charge of the police and the inspector general police, the commissioner police, they are answerable to their superiors, uh, you know, uh, in that order. And very uh, distant, though, and also very distant from the scene of crime. And also very distant from the scene of crime. Geographically, so geographically and, do, uh, and documentationally. <laughs> yes, and then they say that uh, the governor is the is the chief security officer. If a chief security officer is in ironic. charge, uh, you know, is in charge of nothing, he can only appeal to the security agencies to say, please help me, help me, we are, we are in problem. But when we have this structure where the governor is actually, you know, the, command, uh, the chief security officer of the state, he gives an order and is carried out to the last letter, all of this will not happen. Our, our, our governor is a very pragmatic person and he's a no-nonsense governor. Is a man who is a disciplinarian as well. And so when he finds himself in this kind of situation, it's very painful. His hands are tied. There's nothing he can do. But if we had a state police and this governor that we have today is directly in charge of the you know, uh, you know, security architecture of the state and he gives order and is obeyed to the last letter without those in charge referring to you know, getting clearance from their bosses elsewhere. I'm sure this matter would have been dealt with in such a way that the, the public would be happy. But however, yeah, this is political error. And as a politician and as a leader whose, whose hand is tied, what he needed to do was to be diplomatic, like Nancy said earlier, to apply some diplomatic uh, you know, uh, methods and strategies to ensure that the matter does not escalate more than what it is so that more lives and properties are not destroyed within and around the state. And it did that perfectly well. And when I used that phrase previously, that resolved, you, you weren't happy with it. But the resolved in that context, I said before, is that the army has agreed to leave because it was a big problem for us. We wanted the army to go so that, uh, you know, reconstruction of that community can commence and then life is brought back to the people. Thank you very much. Uh, I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't quite unhappy. I was a bit disturbed, yes, but not, <laughs> not quite unhappy. But I, I guess it was a matter of uh, semantics between, I between so. the... But you made your point and made your point well enough. And uh, the last point you've even made is very interesting to me, you know. Um, uh, I, I think it's about time we looked, we looked critically into letting the elected, and I can't accentuate that enough, elected governors, people who have earned the mandate. Of, in any liberal democracy, uh, the mandate means a lot. 
you know, and, and yet he, he, he's going to just have to be waiting on people who are distant from. But let me go to uh, Honorable Ehare. Uh, Honorable, uh, I don't quite envy even people like you who work around the governor. The reason is that uh, some of you will be getting calls from from your from the areas where you, especially those who are from that area, Bomadi local government area, uh, Okwama, and some of the other, uh, some of the other uh, conurbations they were reportedly, reportedly said to have been uh, ostracized or quarantined by, by the military. Because at some point they said operationally they quarantined the sizable a sizable um, swath of, of uh, that neighborhood beyond the even Okoma. Uh, how would you want to react to that, sir, or respond to that? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, once again, I would like to say that uh, the exit or withdrawal of the army from Okoma is a great relief and a welcome development to Deltans and the people of that enclave. The reason why I say so is because there was, there's nothing really that the government would have done while the army uh, still maintains uh, their presence in that uh, community. So their withdrawal is a great relief. And uh, I can tell you for free that um, uh, the people are willing to return and the government is also ready to rehabilitate them. Now, would you be kind enough to give us any further information on the alleged more than two of some police, police operatives, because beyond the army's, uh, the army's unfortunate incident that was that was well publicized, uh, some may not know that there were some alleged cases of murders of policemen who were also going about their normal duty around that area. Uh, would you be kind enough to give us the? the update on that if there's any well uh, i i cannot uh, tell you precisely that there was any attacks on the police uh what i can tell you is that the reports we got uh was that um some uh, non-state actors uh were actually trying to 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 steal from the community immediately the the soldiers pulled out from the community uh, some non-state actors uh, took to uh, the community to see what they can ravage, what they can salvage from the community. And uh, at that point in time, the real owners of the community were returning based on the instruction from the governor that they can, they are not free to return following the exit of the military. So whatever happened uh, between uh, the return of the real owners of the community and those uh, 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 thieves, so-called thieves, you know, uh, I cannot tell you precisely because I wasn't there. And I, I I I you, may, you may not have understood the question I asked you uh, because I was talking to just about when the incidents, when the unfortunate incidents of the uh, military killings happened. The police also came out with uh, with uh, killings of some of their of their personnel, but if you're not aware, no, 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 no. no. The, the police did not record any casualty. In the in Okwama. Okay. I believe what happened to the police. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, it's, uh, it's in Ugeli North, not in Ugeli South. It's a different uh, scenario. Okay. Entirely. A different. Uh, yes, it has area. nothing to. What happened to the police in that enclave had, had nothing to do with uh, the Okwama incident. It's a different thing entirely, and uh, it has to do with um, headsmen and all of that. Some uh, rogue, rogue headsmen, you know. Oh. <sighs> We still have a country. I, I, I will not join them to say there was a country. I am one who believes yeah. that we still have a country. And uh, mm. with, with the determination of some of us that we will get, we will get this nation back to sanity, uh, God, will, God will endure all of us who are so determined to achieve it in our lifetime. Um, Doctor, uh, barrister, I, I'm sitting there now thinking, and I'm talking as somebody who has a bit of a... Uh, I was once kidnapped in Delta, but 
not quite recently. That was the that was the, under you know under the previous uh, government. Indeed, in my capacity as a director of um, of a training a training facilitator, we went to examine uh, uh, government government technical college Sapele. We were going to uh, government technical college Uheli and somewhere uh, around the Wari village called Adagbrasa. There was a, there was a hold up. A village called Adagbrasa was kidnapped, uh, and I'm thinking. What should we, all of us in leadership, even beyond those of you people in political leadership, all of us in leadership, what should we be doing to wrestle, to wrestle the youths, especially youths of the Niger Delta from the, what is seeming to be endemic violence? What can we be putting our heads, our minds, uh, and strategies and actions and deeds to, to wrestle a larger percentage of them? Because earlier on, uh, Honorable Leghare uh, used phrases like uh, non-state actors. We know what that means. Some, well, okay. Do doctor, what would be your response to that? Uh, just let me clear this issue that in Delta, uh, kidnapping is not rampant. It's, I can say that Delta is one of the safest states in this country. And I think uh, it, two, less than 24 hours ago, the Commissioner of Police in Delta State also came on radio program to say that uh, the state is one of the safest in the country. And that is very, very correct. But there's no society without crime. <laughs> not even in the U.S., not in U.K., not in elsewhere. Uh, well, what you tend to do in every society is to make sure that the rate of crime is minimal, very low, so that there will be no much, uh, you know, crisis. Having said that, um, I think the problem we also have today that is escalating, you know, criminality and kidnapping is uh, is uh, bad governance. Uh, our political leaders would need to who, who need to rejig uh, the system. Uh, for example, this new administration of uh, President Tinubu, uh, the, the removal of the first subsidy, and uh, at the same time, the foreign exchange market that has gone haywire, uh, escalated uh, our our poverty level, and at the same time. Inflation went up up to about 35, now going to about 38 percent. And under that condition, you will know that when there is inflation, it affects every aspect of the, of the nation's economy. And people find it extremely difficult, you know, to survive. And I think if we have good governance at the three arms of government, both the federal, state, and local government levels, and then um, people's money are being utilized to better their lives. I think that will also reduce the issue of crime. Then thirdly, the security architecture of this country will need to be rejected. Uh, the concentration of the security architecture in the hands of the federal government alone uh, is already a cake, and it's something that we will have to revisit. And so that when we have this uh, direct authority of governors or regions, as the case may be, to control the security apparatus, and they take direct instructions from governor, take direct instructions from people that they need to take to without recourse to, to Abuja, then we will be able to now, you know, provide effective policing and at the same time, you know, uh, protect life and property the way it should be. Okay, uh, you uh, okay, about, you uh, okay yes. doctor, I, I, I'll likely come back to you before we wrap it up, but uh, we have uh, another, another uh, guest joining us uh, comrade Caro Edo from Iri Community in Isoko South. Uh, comrade, welcome to Plus Politics today. Thank uh, you very much. Uh, uh, what, what would be your background? There? How would you want to set out to some of the things we've discussed if you've had any 
of our line of discussion. Yes, sir, I can't really hear you clearly. I don't join now. What's the question again, sir? Okay, what is your take of the fact that the military has eventually uh, evacuated Okoma, the people, according to the bidding and encouragement of the governor, uh, reportedly returning? Uh, but unfortunately, we have also been updated that some wayward characters um, have seemingly have been reported to be perpetrating crimes of opportunity or opportunism like raiding people's houses you know so what is your take of all these developments okay thank you very much for having me on this platform thank you yeah uh, I just want to know about the withdrawal of uh, the military from Oklahoma. I want to commend uh, His Excellency, the Governor of the for that for that move. Can you hear me? We can hear you well enough. Perfect. Yeah, but the truth is this. I like being very practical. We have to go back to the report of the crisis. I don't know if you are there. Yeah, we're listening to you. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, say your mind. Of this crisis, it has to do with uh, oil bunkering and all that. I'm, I'm like this in issues that are happening there. I've been in trouble for some time now. So, what I want to say is this. What was the military interference as regards land dispute between Obama and uh, Okolova? These are all tracking. It has to do with Korea Bunker. I don't want to mention names here, but I will tell you for free. It has to do with the Korean Bunker activity. And it's just like uh, a small screen to eliminate the particular ethnic nationality from, from the oil business. So that was my take on that. I don't want to join the military from. Uh, Obama and all that. Yeah, fine, it's commendable. But I would want the federal government, the state government, to dig deep and find out the root cause of the crisis in the first place. Uh, but, yeah. uh, comrade, as we speak, yeah. there are two extant, extant committees or commissions are looking oh. into the details of what happened. Uh, there is yeah. one by the state government, and there is another by the military hierarchy. Uh, and, and, and naturally, one would want to believe that they will be forensic enough to laser into some of the points you've made. Disturbingly so, because some of us have also read and had, uh, I know, the two gentlemen... Let me continue, let me continue, sorry. Before now, we've been seeing... There are a lot of uh, committees <laughs> that they've constituted in the past as regards any issue that has to do with, uh, you know, the Nigeria politics and all that. But let me tell you, even if tomorrow you call it to your city, I will tell you that it has to do with oil boundary. It has to do with the pipeline of that contract. It has to do with a lot of things. Some persons in Delta are just trying to like whole sway of the whole oil activity. So they had only this guys of the Koloba and Obama crisis. Tell you to this guys. Are you there? I, I, I can hear you. Would you want to yeah. repeat that? So what I'm saying in essence is this. the government, whatever committee that they set up to investigate what actually happened, they should be independent, no form of interference. And the community should go down to the community and have an organic information of what really transpired. A lot of people are out there that can give information, but they are scared to come out. But if they have the, 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 the sincerity of the government 
I will tell you, a lot of people will want to see what okay. truly happened. Okay, let, let me, let me, let me uh, go to uh, the media advisor of the governor. Honorable, Honorable yeah. Eware, uh, there is a polite, uh, a polite or discreet uh, slap on uh, the seeming hypocrisy of those of you who are in, uh, who are in official dome, that you may seem to know as much as the comrade from Isoko is telling the world, but you can't dare say it and uh, you, you give us a cosmetic touch of what is happening when ordinarily anybody familiar with that territory knows that the causes of this violence are deeper and far more sordid, or bunkering. Uh, some elements becoming above, you know, uh, living above the rule of law. And uh, people naturally, when frustrated, uh, fight back, and we, we have all these, and uh, some people, how did the military get there? Some people are asking, who called them? Uh, which of the communities called them, or did the chieftain call them to come and... These are some of the issues out there. How would you want to respond to that? Uh, well, thank you very much, sir. First, uh, I would like to uh, first apologize. Uh, you know, you mentioned earlier that um, uh, some years ago, um, you, you, they kidnapped you along uh, Adabrasa. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure that uh, was because of uh, the poor state of the road as at that time. Oh yes. Uh, because as we speak, uh, that's one of the projects that uh, Governor Sheriff Uburuguri uh, will be inaugurating to celebrate uh, his uh, uh, one year in office. Ah, you are you know, quite the, right. That uh, road was bad. It was because it was yes. rainy. And you know the road Passive, was yes. littered with potholes. It was whilst yes, we were from, managing the potholes that some boys just came from somewhere and uh, <laughs> quiet. As we speak, as we speak from the Ohore Junction on the uh, on the Saple uh, Wari Expressway to down to Okan Junction through Agbarasa uh, to Agbaru to the express again and on the East West Road, it's, it's all been reconstructed. So. And it's part of what uh, the sheriff administration is trying to do to ensure that those passing through um, the um, and, uh, uh, that's the uh, a full roundabout to uh, PTI Junction and then the DSC roundabout will have a free way to pass uh, following the construction of the three flyovers uh, awarded to Julius Vega. So there's a bypass from Ohore Junction to Adagbrasa to Okan Junction. You know, that, that that environment that you were kidnapped some years ago is a free ride as we speak right now. That's by the way. Now, for the issues that um, we're talking about in Okwama and environs, uh, we are, what we are saying is that whatever led to the crisis we, 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 is, is regrettable, all right? Uh, we do not want to uh, go into to revisit what led to the crisis but what we are saying is that we want peace in that community, and Governor Sheriff Oboruwari is determined to ensure that there is peace in the Kwama community. That's what we can tell you for sure, because the the committee that was set up to ensure that uh, those returning from um, um, uh, the, the, the internally displaced persons, because the entire community of Kwama is displaced as we speak, uh, following that attack on that community by the army. And so uh, the governor is really interested in ensuring that the people of that community are reinstated okay. back to their former state. I, I want so to thank you, uh, uh, Honorable Ehare, I want to thank you for participating uh, tonight. Let me let uh, Dr. Latimo give us his own epilogue too. Doctor, how would you want to wrap it up before I go to the gentleman that came in last? Dr. Uh, Latimo. It is to uh, appeal to the security agencies to provide adequate security for the common people that are returning. Uh, that should be for a, a period of time uh, to make them have that to, to swift years that when they come to be attacked. So the security agencies need to uh, you know, help us to secure that environment, to encourage the people to return back home 
why the governor I, is. I join. Uh, I join my voice with yours on that particular, on that particular exhortation to the chieftains of the security agencies. Uh, these people cannot be twice or three times uh, scandalized by many of them who are innocent by circumstances that we have institutions of state that ought to protect them from such malay. Thank you, doctor. We will have vocations to have you uh, in the not so distant future. Uh, let me let uh, uh, Comrade Caro, uh, Comrade Caro, please uh, wrap it up finally uh, for the show. Uh, how would you want to close? Yeah, on a personal note there, uh, the show is, I think some of the elements in the, in, the, in the region need to be asked some questions. With all due respect, the next of them follow needs to be called on form because there are so many things that are pointing at him. He has to come out and say something as far as your former crisis is concerned. He has to come out and say something about it because he knows those people, he knows them. You know the military that went there. You are not afraid to say that. I think the beauty, the beauty of democracy, a uh, liberal democracy yeah. such as the one we are practicing, is that. Uh, no, sir. Please, please. Allow me land. Allow me land. Okay. Allow me land. Yeah. What I'm saying is this. I say this is a plot to the it's particular. As robust, you know, to robust from existence. So what we are seeing here is just. Let me tell you, I was called upon some time ago. Some person called me while I was uh, agitating for the pipeline surveillance contract and all that. And I was, uh, I had a lot of certain messages and all that. And I told them, I said, well, I'm here I am. And I have to fight for what I think is necessary for my people. So the rest of people and the rest are going to tell me to come out and take their own part of the story of what happened between Okama and Koloba crisis. We are not here to confuse anybody. Life is lost. We have to go now. We have to, the backroom boys are literally agitating that uh, the show be ended. I really want to thank you. At least you've given some, uh, some dint of courage into yeah. what those in official don't may not want to speak to. Uh, thank you. This is where we wrap it up for tonight. Uh, it's been a very interesting show. We really prayerfully and heartily wish those uh, who are victims, the, inno who are the innocent victims of the circumstance in that, in that area. We wish them all the best, but like uh, Dr. Latimo stated, it is imperative. It is very, very necessary that those who are in authority, especially in security, security agencies, our senior securocrats must make sure that these people don't suffer anymore, given what they have unfortunately experienced, coming back to reintegrate into, uh, the, into the community they had to run away from. Thank you. I am Bola Oba. Have a good evening.